Knight, Bat Rep. So welcome back to part two of this battle report. Now it's time for Tau, turn two. So we start by rolling for reserves. His Farsythe does not come in, but his Necron Flyer does come in. There he goes, flying it in. He decides to move his Fire Warriors back slightly to turtle them up in case I try to assault. Then he can overwatch with everyone and pretty much wipe them off. That is the power of the new Tau. So it says he's just moving everyone within really close proximity to each other. And he moves his Pathfinders through cover. And then decides to run them. Five inches. To so get them as well very close to the squad of Fire Warriors and to put them in front. So he starts by trying to finish off that Razorback with his Night Scythe. Needs three's hit, reroll, because they're twin linked. Gets four hits, but no sixes. And then gets one penetrating hit. Rolls on the pen chart, doesn't blow it up, so it's just a wreck. And then the squad disembarks. And they roll off camera for their leadership check, and they did pass. He then shoots his marker lights from the Skyray at the Razorback, fails both of them, and then shoots the remaining missiles. So their strength eight, get three hits, and they get one glance and one pen. He rolls a pen of four. So it's a weapon destroyed. I roll to see which weapon he destroys. One, two, three being the plasma, and I roll a two. Four plus would have been the last cannon. He shoots then his broadsides at the other Razorback. Get a bunch of hits. And out of all those hits, they roll one pen and two glances. Sorry, three pens and one glance. So I roll the three pens and I pass all four of my cover, three of my cover saves. And then I pass my other cover saves. So actually nothing happens. Since the Fire Warriors can't shoot at really anything, he decides to run all of his Fire Warriors. Just up once again a little bit, make sure to keep them pretty close for combined snap fire. Or sorry, combined overwatch. However, they're not running very fast. They're more like power walking fire warriors. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but he used his ethereal power to give them an extra shot. Um, at half range. In case I try to assault him, he can really shoot a lot of shots into whatever he's trying to assault. And he moved up his other squads just one inch. And then during the assault phase, he does his normal jumping with his crisis suits. And they all pretty much move seven or eight inches. And then once again, he's just trying to get his, all of his guys in very close proximity to each other. In case I try to assault anything, everyone else can overwatch on whatever's trying to assault. Friendly overwatch is very powerful for the new Tau. And now it's my turn to hit back in Dark Angels turn two. So I roll for my two squads. And they both come in. They're both identical, so I roll just two dice. Now since... Belial is a teleport homer. Neither one of them scatter if I place the center guy within six inches of the land raider. So they don't scatter. They all come in. I then move up my land raider just six inches up so I can fire a lot of my guns. And then I disembark Belial and his squad. Perhaps a turn too early, but we'll see. I really want to get them in assault. The first squad then decides to shoot at the night scythe since it was one of the few things that I could see. They are twin-linked weapons the turn they come in, so I need sixes, though. So I had two hits with my assault cannon and one pen, but he rolls his jinx save. I then try to repeat this with the other squad. Once again with the assault cannon, I need sixes to hit. Get one hit on the first one, twin-linked, so I get two hits. Fives to glance, six to pen, but unfortunately nothing. Belial squad and then shoots at the closer Pathfinder squad. And I try to, what I decide to do is split fire my missiles to the crisis suit so that I can instant kill them. I do pass my leadership check. 
So I roll with my two hits, needing threes, and I fail both of them. I would have instantly killed those crisis suits. And the rest of the squad then shoots at the Pathfinders. But this time, they all hit. And then my leader shoots as well, Belial. And I had about eight hits total. And I need threes to wound. And I only get one non-wound, so he gets tons of wounds. But rolls really well in his cover save, so I only kill three of his Pathfinders. But that's enough to make them roll a leadership check. My land raider decides to flame the closest individual and then fire the assault cannon at full ballistic skill on that squad as well. So all four of the hits from the assault cannon. And I get three wounds. And then the one flamer also wounds. So then he rolls... And fails three. So three of his fire warriors, sorry, four fire warriors total die. That one Razorback then tries to snapshot the Skyray, but fails. So then he does his leadership check for the squad of Pathfinders. And he fails. So they're going to run how many inches back? Nine inches back, putting them well out of reach of Belial and his squad. So essentially now I can't assault them. Things are not looking too good for the Dark Angels. And the other squad passes its leadership check. All right, so after two turns, here's what the battlefield looked like. Not a lot of Dark Angels left. Well, my bodies are still there, but the vehicle, I don't know. It's going to be fun. Because next turn, things are coming that are going to be really scary. But uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, the tower is still alive and doing well. Luck is just not on the Dark Angel's side. We'll see what happens in turn three. So thank you very much for watching this part. When you're ready, click on the link below to go to part three of this 40k battle report.